Dear Muslims, we live in interesting times. In this land of ours, if a teenager, a young man or woman, 17 years old, if they wish to get a tattoo, a permanent ink on their body, the law will say, that's not allowed, you're too young to get a tattoo. If a 20 year old wants to purchase beer, the law will say, you're too young, you cannot drink beer. In fact, if any minor wants to purchase nicotine, cigarettes, they too will be told this is not allowed. If a young man or woman below the age of 18 goes to the doctor, says, I want cosmetic surgery, the law will say, society will say, parents will say, rightfully so, you're too young to make this decision. But what we are seeing now is something very strange. In the same land where a 17 year old cannot purchase cigarettes, if that same child comes and says, oh, I think I have been born into the wrong body. I think my gender has been assigned by God incorrectly. I think that I want to shift to another gender. And they go to the doctor, not for tattoo, not for cosmetic surgery to look more handsome and beautiful, but to self mutilate themselves, to cut off their natural organs, to amputate that which makes them quintessentially male or female. If they go to the doctor and say, I want to block the natural progression of puberty. I want to take abnormal, atypical drugs so that I don't develop and blossom into a young lady or I don't become a young man. The same society is going to welcome and embrace. And in case the parents say, oh, hold on a sec, you're too young. How can you make this decision? What we are seeing now is that terrifyingly, the law is siding with a child against the parents. Already in Canada, a minor wanted, a boy wanted to become a girl. The parents said no. This young boy sued his own parents in court. He was not yet 18. And he said, my parents are preventing me from becoming a sheep. And so he sued his parents to become a sheep. And the courts sided with him, stripped his parents' rights to be parents, took him away from his parents because that is abuse in their eyes, put him in another home and allowed him to transition into her. May Allah protect all of us if the same trend continues. What will we do if one of our own children is brainwashed? What will we do if a seven-year-old in our own masjid stands up and says, I'm in a different gender? And we are, and I say this bluntly, the last religious civilization that is sticking to its roots here and not capitulating to the whims and desires of modern society. It is sad to point out that the bulk of other Abrahamic religions, we say this, wallahi, with a sense of sadness. We say this wanting them to have stood up, yet they have capitulated and they have acquiesced and they have surrendered by and large. So if they have surrendered, well then even more so, we are going to stand up and by Allah, we shall never surrender on this reality. Brothers and sisters, and especially our young brothers and sisters, our teenagers and those younger than them, we need to understand no matter what society teaches you, no matter what cartoons say, no matter what Disney Channel has, we need to understand that mankind is divided into male and female. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha. O mankind, we created you from one man and one woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa batha minhu from the two of them, I spread forth multitudes of men and multitudes of women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The man is not like the woman. Such a simple ayah. For centuries, for millennia, people glossed over this ayah. It's such a simple fact. Why put it in the Quran? But here we are. We have to quote this ayah. And this ayah takes on a whole new meaning in the culture that we live in. At every single level, the man is not like the woman. Biological sex is determined even down to the chromosomes. You can take any cell out of a body and you can examine that cell if it's XX or XY chromosome and you can tell whether the cell comes from a man, comes from a woman. The body of the man, the body of the woman is different. It is different physiologically. It is different in the genitalia. It is different in the body mass, in the muscle mass, in the mass of every single aspect. It is different in the density of the bones. You can find a skeleton two million years old and you can test whether it is male or female. Hormonally, intellectually, physically. And when I say intellectual, I'm not saying one of the two is better than the other. No, women are highly talented in areas men are not talented in and vice versa. Each one of them has talents the other does not have. Each one of them has strengths the other does not have. And put together the strengths of the man and the strengths of the woman become the strengths of the mother and father and the family is protected. But when you try to tinker with this reality, when you try to change the default, well then you're going to end up where we have ended up. Brothers and sisters, the claim that biological sex is a choice. It is not just 
factually incorrect. It is not just scientifically, patently false. It goes against the lived reality of every society known to mankind from the beginning of human history. And yet, if you look at what our children are being taught, they are taught that you may choose your gender and you may change your mind every few days. One day you wake up and you're this, the other day you wake up, you're that. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, it's not just two genders. I actually checked today to make sure I'm up to date and I'm not exaggerating. 105 identities, genders and identities, more flavors than Baskin Robbins. You wake up and you just change every day. I want to be this, I want to be that. Those people who are born male, but they say they are now female. Okay, they want to compete in sports events as well, which is a problem, but they also want to now go to the bathrooms of the different gender. So somebody born and raised as a man now says, oh, but I identify as a woman. He wants to go to the woman's bathroom. Somebody born as a woman, the other way around. They want to go to the locker rooms and high schools of the opposite gender. Just because they claim something, that's it. And they don't even have to prove. They don't even have to undergo any surgery because now the notion is, it's just an identity of the mind, a social construct. Unless we stand up and speak, unless we fight for our religious and civil rights, the situation is only going to become worse. In the end of the day, brothers and sisters, we cannot force anybody to do anything, but we will draw the line when it comes to our rights, when it comes to our preaching, and especially when it comes to our children. Do whatever you will, you have to answer to your Lord. But when you drag in your promiscuity and you show us drag queens in our own public schools, in our own public spaces, when you spoon feed our children to begin questioning their gender at the age of five or six, well then no, no. We are not the ones preaching hatred. You are the ones preaching indoctrination. You are the ones spreading immorality and and filth in places where you are not welcome. Do as you please in your personal lives, but leave our children out of it. Go to the same movement that wants to tinker with gender and say to them, let's tinker with an actual social construct. Let somebody who's of a white skin color identify as from African heritage. Let somebody who's from the Far East identify as Caucasian. Let somebody who's born into a poor family identify as being from the royal kings of Norway. You must announce me by my pronoun, Her Royal Highness, that's gonna be my pronoun. What will the same movement and say, have you lost your mind? Or how dare you, that's insulting. Social appropriation, misappropriation. You have no right to claim your ethnicity is different than what you are. You have no right to claim your class, your social hierarchy is different than what you are. This is social misappropriation. So subhanAllah, we say you're right. But then when we acknowledge that this race and ethnicity is 100% man-made, then we are telling you go beyond this and go to that which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not tinker with what Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you. Brothers and sisters, Iblis threatened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, because of what you have done, I will misguide all of these people. And Iblis said to Allah, the majority of them will be unthankful. And you know what Iblis said? I'm going to misguide them and command them to the extent they will change the way that you created them. They're going to disfigure their own selves. What greater disfiguration when the gift that Allah has given you, you reject it and say, no, I will cut my own member off. I will disfigure my own body. And I think this is something that is praiseworthy. What this movement is doing, it is implementing the misguidance of Iblis and rejecting the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we seek Allah's protection from this misguidance and to Him we turn. The transgender movement is a part of a broader cultural trend that goes down many decades. It is based upon a rejection of a higher sense of morality. It is based upon a rejection of the divine. And it's embracing hedonism and sensuality and narcissism of the most basis human desires. Its basic premise is that one's feelings are the ultimate arbiter of truth. If I feel something, then this is the way it should be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion has come and told us that's not how we base facts. Have you not seen the one who took his desires as his God? The entire movement from beginning to end, from its very inception 100 years ago, the entire movement is a threat to family values and hence to a wholesome society. As Muslims, we must have the courage. 
we must have the iman, we must have the fortitude to stand up, to protect our own children, to protect our own families from such misguidance. And we speak to our fellow citizens and we tell them, turn back to God. It is still not too late. Turn back to my God and your God. Turn back to the God of Abraham because the path that you are heading down, this path is a path of utter depravity and moral destruction. And unless God saves us all, unless there is intervention from up above, there is no end to this other than the destruction of the family and with that, the destruction of society. Wallahu ta'ala al-musta'an.